Ladies and gentlemen, it's always satisfying when you, you get to know someone and you watch them ascend and they come in and then the next time you see them, they've taken steps and had growth and that is exactly what's happened with our guest, Double XL Freshman, Wi-Fi's funeral in the building on Hot 97. Yeah. Um, yo, uh, so no, number one, congratulations. Thank you, bro. Appreciate it. Double uh, XL Freshman, um, which is... You know, I, I have my, every year we discuss it, we question some things, we like some things, we don't like some things, 100%. but it still has, um, <coughs> it still has impact. Did, right. you, did you feel the impact right away from getting it? From a personal standpoint, yeah. Did I feel that from a, like a, a group standpoint, like all of us as artists, like doing this together for the freshmen? Like, nah. I felt like a lot of the, the artists there didn't really care about it. I really, thought, you didn't feel everyone thought it was that big a deal. One hundred percent. I feel like everybody, everybody put up a front because they know if they were to say like, "Oh, well, I mean, I'm just here just to be here," like they would have looked stupid. You know what I mean? So I feel like everybody was just coming up with excuses of as to why they care about it. But you could say shit, but what you show is completely different. You know what I mean? Like how do well, how would people not show that? Like with their freestyle or I mean, just like you know what I mean? Like how however your attitude is. When you come into your, your day job, that determines on how your day is going to be. You feel me? If you come in with a shitty attitude, you're going to have a, a shitty day. If you come in with a great attitude, shit, you might have a great day. Did you guys all come together for the photo shoot? Yeah, we did. Okay, so you're saying in, in that context, when you got well, to no, see not, everyone. Not even in that, in that context. It's just more just of like a, a, a general like base. Like you, like the energy like felt weird. Like got it. it. It didn't feel like nobody appreciated it. Like the appreciation was out the window. It felt like... It felt like damn near that like all their managers probably sat down with them and was like, all right, now you got to mention how much you appreciate this because, you know. Whereas for you, yeah, you like we, we've for always, we talked about this first time I interviewed you, you're a rap head. Like you care yeah. about these these yeah. things. That was like a personal like goal for me. I was like, yo, this is the proudest moment of my life. Like, um, that's that's amazing. And it's got to be so, it's, I thought about this the other day. It's got to be a weird time for you because the XXL freshman and XXX passing yeah. away, yeah. Uh, being killed. Yeah happened in such a short span F, I, to be honest with you everything has changed within like the last six months and i still don't get it i'm, I'm just i'm just riding <laughs> no way bro you know what i mean it's just doing the best that, that we can do i'm just being me like nothing's really changed like the formula hasn't changed uh the way how i approach things haven't changed that much there's been little tweaks you know what i mean but that's like on, on some personal shit rather than like some artistry shit Everything we're doing is pretty much the same. I guess everything's just falling. But is it is it hard to was it hard to celebrate one thing while mourning another thing? A hundred percent. I mean, like it's it's hard for me to celebrate anything, period, because it's hard for my for my brain to digest certain shit. Like when positive shit happens to me, it's hard for my brain to be like, yo, this is lit. Like this is happening. I'm so used to having a negative outlook on things. So it's like even if something good's happening to me, like for instance, like Sway, I did an interview with Sway, and mm -hmm. Sway told me that he fucks with my music. You should feel happy about that. Mm -hmm. You should be like, yo, Sway fucks with you. Like, be happy about it. But I'm like, is he lying? Or like, this or that. Does like, he mean it? Yeah, it's like always on some negative shit that my mind's on. So I like, don't, you know what? I don't think you're unique in that. I, I wouldn't, I, I think a lot of people in the public eye feel that way um, and have a tougher time processing. I know that like getting a positive, hearing something positive from someone is weighs it weighs like a tenth of what hearing something negative does. Yeah. That's just like, you know, I can yeah, get one tweet that says, yo, <clears throat> podcast was amazing this week. And the next one could be like, yeah, you know what? You fell off. This isn't why wow, you sold out. That that one This is what that's what's gonna strike the nerve. That yeah. strikes the nerve. The positive yeah. one, you like read it and you're like, eh. okay, now um we do have to talk about yeah. are we have we settled into how many face tattoos you have? I feel <laughs> like we have enough. Yeah. What are you? How, let talk to me, cause there's more uh, than the last time I saw you. That's okay. for sure. Uh, now last time I came here, last time I came here, I didn't have my little sister's name right here, and then I got this after X died. So th what does this one mean? It says alone and a broken heart. He had the broken heart tattooed on the right side of his face, mm -hmm. and then he had alone on his eyebrow, or like above his eyebrow. But I didn't, I didn't want to give it above my eyebrow. You like, want to do a different? Uh, I want, I like anywhere that I'm at, like he's, like he's there. You feel me? Like I don't want people to see it. Like I don't want people to be like, oh. That's a dope, like, ex-memorial tattoo she got, like, not, like, Jasse is, like, right there with me. And, and, like, and, and then, did you have, you had love on the side of your face before? Yeah. And then what at the other side? Hate. Um, that makes sense. Um, so, we're, but we're done. Uh, face tattoos wise like, yeah, now I'm just, like, focusing more on my, my whole body. I got Bret Hart's logo right here. No, nah, let me see. Yeah. What? Yeah. That's super tight. I swear to God. So, is Bret your number one? 
Brett's my number one as far as like motivation. Like him and CM Punk are like number one people that like motivated me, like on some motivational shit. Like best there is, best there was, best ever will be, best in the world. Like, cause that's just the the attitude that I want to come into this shit because I used to always come into it like, oh, all right, well, you know, like I made it this far, so I'll just wing it. Like, all right, well, you know, my music's okay, but like, you know, we all right, we here. Like now I'm just on some like. Fuck everyone. Like, I'm going to just do this. I mean, listen, that's, uh, that's, uh, it's funny you say that because my, my like re entry into being really into wrestling um, was about that same shit, which was, was about motivational stuff, which mm -hmm. I know is probably interesting to people because they're like, well, wait, why is the thing that you chose to be motivated by the thing that you know is a scripted performance as opposed to an athlete? But it makes no difference. To me, it's I just about like the character. Yeah, it's about like the passion. You know what I mean? Like, the, the like, like, when you see Ric Flair cut a promo, how can you not be inspired by that? Yeah. I, I watched this 30 for 30, and that was the best shit I ever watched in my life. I was like, wow. Like, this man is amazing. Yeah. Like, he's a genius. Um, <laughs> just, cause it'll, just because it'll pop you. So last week I did, uh, I was on ESPN, and I did, they had me do, um, they were like, oh, do you, it was on July 4th. They're like, oh, hey, can you do a, um, a, a rank your favorite wrestlers? Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah, yeah, that's easy. Sure, no problem. So I did that. And I, I did my top five, and I had Flair, I had Flair number two. That's not a, that's not a bad choice, honestly. And, and this is this. <laughs> look at this text right here. It was on July fourth. That's the hence the bottom part. I'll take it. Jesus Christ. <laughs> he said, "Yeah, I, I do not hear from Ric Flair." And he said, "I'll take number two all day long, my friend." That's crazy. Yo. <laughs> and then sends the happy, the super bootleg bit emoji, happy Fourth of July, yeah. happy birthday, yeah, America. Yeah. You know, you know them old, you know them old gifs you would post on your MySpace. Yeah, like, yo, it's like, a my, it looks like. Yo, that's what it yeah. is. It's the ones that used to fill up people's MySpace pages, their Black Planet page. Yeah, no. um, who, who's, who are your? So Brett, so you love Bret Hart, I love you love Brett. Punk, but bro. The punk UFC thing is, is this is not good. I feel like I feel like that man should do anything that he desires in his heart to do, because um, a lot of people didn't think he was gonna get far with wrestling. To be real with you, so you don't think he should give up on you on your? I don't feel like anybody should give up on something that they feel is personally like their dream, like like in their gut. If that's something that he feels like within himself as a man that he has to do that, like he has to achieve that goal and be in the UFC and win a fight. Or possibly start a career, do it. Did you watch the fight? I didn't watch the fight personally because Good it's for like you. Good decision. Because like me, like as a fan, I don't I don't want to see him go out like that. You know what I mean? Like I don't want to see him go out like that. I rather I rather I rather remember like him in a light where like he had gold around his waist and people like had the utmost respect for him as opposed to like giving a reason to degrade him. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I hear you. And I hope that, listen, you're right. I, I definitely think people should pursue whatever it is that they're passionate about. But sometimes, you know what I mean? If, if life's giving you that that wake up call of like, yo, this just isn't working out, then I don't, I don't fuck it. You know what I mean? On to the next one. I, I totally understand. Hold on, Megan, walk, 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 come into the room. Hi. Sorry, sorry, Megan Wright. I'm still here and I didn't even contact you today. Yeah, you good. Don't care. Good Come job. On, let me call you right back. <laughs> um, okay, bye. Megan Wright just stepped in on real late. There's right. Wi-Fi's funeral. Megan Wright. Hi, Meg. You want to sit? Want to sit and join me? Sure. We're, Wait, what's happening right now? We're chat. They were chatting for real late with Wi-Fi's funeral. Um, we're talking about. We were just talking about. Actually, it's funny you brought that up because you're talking about how you don't respect me and my my space. No. Oh, okay. I totally, I'm just kidding. Totally <laughs> okay. I don't care. 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 We actually were talking about wrestling. <laughs> okay. Oh, let's talk. Let's so uh, we were just talking about CM Punk, but I wanted to know who are you feeling right now? Who are the current people wrestling right now that you're into? Kenny Omega. Oh, uh, you're a, you're an Omega guy, bro. Like Kenny Omega is the best wrestler out right now. Like he's the most. He's the most fit, most agile. He's got the most charisma that I've seen thus far. Like he reminds me of like a better and more. He's a more agile and like improved version of Shawn Michaels. So that's high praise. Um, and I agree with you from a physical standpoint. He's sick, bro. Like it, I, I've never seen someone like that jacked up be able to like do like half of the flips. That Kenny he does. Omega is a star in Japan. That's how hardcore Wi-Fi is going with it right now. He's like the number one. And the, I like the, 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 the you like Asuka? Yes. What Asuka's about? amazing. Yeah, Asuka. I just I hate like, the fact that her streak ended. That's that should. I know. Hurt. I like Asuka, and myself. you know it's. Say I it. normally I normally go. I'm always like how some. Do you, do you like Charlotte at all? I don't know. I'm like really particularly hard on you know, because you know I was like a really big like China fan. Like that was my era. I was like the Attitude yeah. Era fan. And then like I took a little break. Everybody and does. Then, <laughs> and then the I came thing. back. 
and then I remember that Rosie took me. Where did we go? We went uh, the somewhere. first time I went Barclays Center. Yeah, we went somewhere. It was my first time going like in a while, mm-hmm. and people kept telling me to look her up, but I don't think at that time she had like com- completely moved over. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when I saw her, I was like, I got that feeling of Oscar? like, yeah, like she's like superstar. What I like about her is that. It's like the same shit with Shinsuke. You know what I mean? Like, yes. You you're going to a completely different country. You don't know any English at all. Right. But like, you know how to do your job like really fucking well. Right. Yeah. So it's like that just speaks for itself. Like you don't even have to speak. Like you're. That, that's what I respect more. You know what I mean? And I I think that's how I'm trying to approach music. Just like let my work speak more than like words, because it's like I can only say but so much. You know what I mean? And convince you. You know what I mean? Like I'd rather just show you what the fuck I can do, and you'd yeah. be like, I right, bet. And it seems like since I it seems like since I first saw you at Rolling Loud uh, a, a year and a half ago, it's just the it, the growth has just continued. Dude, and- I don't to be real with you. I like I said, I wake up every day and I'm like a hundred percent thankful for it. I just don't know how to process it. It's like it's so weird. It's so weird. Like like waking up and being like, yo, I'm a fucking rapper. Like I don't believe it half of the time. I think I'm a normal ass person. To be real with you. He's you from see- my old hood. Oh, really? I lived there for like a year and a half in West Palm Beach. Oh, yeah, I didn't realize that you lived in that hood. <laughs> yeah. You've been so many places, I, I didn't even I realize. I lived in so many places. I met him at the studio, and I went and listened to to some of his stuff. When did I see you? How long ago was that? Like a... no, You saw me like... But so much has happened since like then. Like three, four months ago. Yeah, but, so, but I'm, for, get, but I'm guessing three, three, this is a connection through Ski Mask Lump God, I'm guessing. It's actually not. In, uh, it's through... Really? Nigel. I met you through Nigel. Yeah. Through Nigel. I met you through uh, Nigel. But Ski Mask is friend of mine and my neighbor so <laughs> yeah so you know but it's actually not um did you already ask him how he feels about being on the double xl color just we, because we, yeah we just got, because got, that's got, so cool we got to a little bit about it okay. i liked it i personally liked that i told him but i just didn't uh like with all the artists coming together right. i didn't i didn't like the feeling of like being around like a good majority of them because i felt like they didn't really like appreciate it I just love the nerdiness of that, that he was like, he really was there for this moment. No, nah, for real. Because, like- you know, people have their opinions on it, but I still think it's an accomplishment yeah, if you're no, on it. It's you 100. know, that's what I think. It's like people say, well, da, 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 and I don't know, but I still think that just, if you I, do I, make it, it on, just, it, it still is an I accomplishment. I feel like personally that the other artists there, they didn't. They didn't give it like that type of appreciation. You know what I mean? I'm pretty sure that they appreciated like being on the cover because they understood like what it was gonna help them for whatever they got going on. But I don't feel like them as individuals appreciated like yo, I'm on double XL. Like, Do you think people no don't understand there. that anymore? Because of the way magazine the way time has changed, like it doesn't mean 100%. the same. Yeah, it's hundred percent. But how old are you? I'm 21. I yeah, mean, why, people, why does he understand it because better? Because some people appreciate things different than others. Like when we when when I first met Ski, Ski has a love DJ for ski? no no ski mask ski, the, sorry. ski mask slump yeah so he has a love for hip hop yeah and not everybody does that so he respects people that came before him but not everybody has they don't really do their research and well, understand that's crazy, things Stokely never used to be like that really I used, it's to, new? Live, I used to live with Stokely and X like we used to all live in the same mm-hmm. apartment together it was you at you ski mask slump god and XXX all lived in the same apartment yeah. We used to all live in the same apartment in, in Orlando. By the way, isn't that bugged out to think about with where? And we only like me and me and Ski have never done a song together. Like we were like genuinely like all just friends. Like we didn't. Uh-huh. It didn't even make music. So together. how did well, like, me and X how... only have like two songs ever that we? How ever did everybody together? come from the same apartment and just like uh, that's or the same area? Because you know, all of a sudden, I know with with the Kodak, and then everybody all of a sudden you started seeing people out of that air, out of you know, out of Florida, but not out of Miami, out of a different, you know. But then I don't. It was more of a like. Then West Palm in the house. It was <laughs> just. <laughs> it was more of just a um, I guess we both kind of all understood what like each of us brought to the table, mm-hmm. just as individuals at the time, and we weren't nothing big, you know what I mean? It was just like South Florida wise, we had like a little name for ourselves, and we would be doing like little shows here and there, and like we would like have people like pop out but we kind of like had a grasp of like what we had in our hands you know what i mean so and instead of just like i guess like ego tripping about it or like doing this and doing that we did nothing but like try to expand it but one thing that we all tried to to keep in the air and sometimes it would go left and sometimes it would go like good is the the respect as men for each other, you know what I mean? Like, you want to be your own boss. I want to be my own boss, you know what I mean? And we want to be at the round table together. Nobody wants to work for anybody, you know what I mean? And it was 
it was hard at first trying to like on all of our ends trying to digest it because you're so used to just like you know what i mean you get your backbone for your friend if they fall da 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 da, da. we had to kind of like learn how it was to just be there for ourselves and like nothing but ourselves you know what and I mean? let each person grow yeah individually. it's like and it's like you know what i mean regardless of if i respect the decision that you make or not as your friend i'm gonna let you rock and let you do whatever you need to do because that's something that you got to do in your life so x was like he was really big on that i was re- i was definitely really big on that and stokely was really big on. were that you too. as 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 much as you've known how talented xxx was were you surprised at the level of outpouring no. that there was? That was completely what you expected. One hundred percent, dude. I, you know, it's crazy. And I'm like, I knew I knew Jose has something special in him. When it was two thousand and six, fifteen or sixteen. When, wait, when was the Yes Jules party? That 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 South by. South by what, what year was that? Two thousand sixteen. All right, so it was two thousand sixteen. South by Southwest at a Yes Jules party, and she invited me and X to perform, and this is before, like, Look At Me was anything, like, anything, to be honest. She invited me and X to perform in front of, like, ASAP Rocky and a, bunch, and a bunch of other people, like, upstairs at this house party. Little do we know that, like, Migos come through, and this is before, like, they were, like, as big as they were. Migos come through and the whole party gets shut down, and yes, she was like, yeah, like, nobody's allowed upstairs. Like, she completely, like, dubbed our shit. But, like, I'm not saying that in a way of, like... No, no, shit just happened, right? Yeah, shit just happened, she just dubbed our shit, and we felt, like, mad disappointed. Cause we were like, fuck, like we came all the way out here to Texas, like to like really like prove ourselves and to like really show these people, like yo, like we not just like some kids, like you know what I mean, like we're actually like taking this shit serious. And I remember, um, Scheme, DJ Scheme, we were on the whip and we were just mad as fuck, cause we had drove from Florida all the way to Texas and Scheme's mm. whip, and Scheme's just like breaking down in the whip, like crying. He's like, yo, like I feel like I failed y'all, like we came out here for no reason. Blase, blase. He and Scheme was the one like keeping us organized and shit at the time too, cause like there wasn't really anybody doing that. Um, and I remember like, I remember X just like saw me and Scheme crying, cause we felt like so disappointed, like we felt like we fucking like just failed everybody that we brought with us. And X grabbed me and Scheme by like our, our shoulders, and like I'm talking like gripped the shit out of me, like I damn near felt like he was about to rip my shit off. And he was like, "Look, bro, ain't nobody ever gonna treat us like that ever again." He's like, I swear to God on everything I love, bro, I will never, ever let another person treat me like that ever again. I won't let another person ever treat you like that ever again. Nothing like people finna put respect on our name, rather they like us or not, love us or hate us. I don't give a fuck. Like, people are gonna listen to us. And I didn't know how to process that because, like like I said, you like, you're thinking, like, negative at the time when all that shit's happening. But then when I saw him get out and I saw the impact that he had the second time that he got out, I was like, yeah, he's not lying. Like, everything that he... Like, he literally prophesized all that shit is wild. Every a good majority of the shit that he's done, he told me before anything happened. Like we would be pissed broke, like sleeping on the floor, like, yo, Zay, I'm about to do this, 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 and that. And I would just look at him like, yeah, all right, nigga. Like, cool. Like, we still broke. Like, you feel me? Like <laughs> Sounds good though. Yeah, but it sounds great. Like, cool. But then like everything happened. He really showed me that, like, yo, like words are very powerful. Yeah. Like for real. They're, They're really very powerful. Are. It's just wild, man. And then you fast forward and, and back to that Rolling Loud, look at me's out, and he performed that joint like eight times, eight times. in a row. Um, and I remember, you know, like I, I've always had a, a mixed bag of emotions about X. Mm-hmm. But I, I know one, and it was started then because I'd already heard the controversy and some people were talking about him, but I'm I'm already the oldest person at the whole concert, right? right. So I'm looking at everything like, this is the guy the kids all love. Mm-hmm. He's got these stories, but let me watch. All I know is is one thing that I could not deny yeah. was that something was fucking happening. Yeah. Like there was, there was literally something happening in front of us of like everyone was talking about that song, that moment. And that was when I came back and first reached out to you because I was like, damn, there are these kids. This is Florida is it. Like this is it. Yeah. And now we fast forward. You're a double XL freshman. Your your XXL freestyle blew up fucking yeah, bro- number, broke the internet. It went number one trending on YouTube. I didn't get that. I, I didn't get it. Like to be real with you, I didn't understand it because it's like I would have expected somebody like Lil Pump or something like that to have like a number one trending video on YouTube. Because you got these bars, son. I guess so. You come with these raps. Now, listen, I, I know you have more stuff to do. But, um, next time, we'll make sure we do the wrestling podcast. So we have like time to like, because are you watching? Every, you watch every week, right? Yeah. 
so we can like actually break down a week of story. Yeah. So next time, Extreme Rules is this weekend. Oh, next oh, next time, we'll, we'll maybe pre SummerSlam. You gonna yeah. come in town for SummerSlam? I'll be in town whenever you need me. I'm here. All right, done. So we'll do it for SummerSlam. Wi Fi's funeral, ladies and gentlemen. Hey. Megan Bryce, special guest. Hey.